Okay. Um, so, as a teacher in Australia, in Melbourne, Victoria, I've had the opportunity to test the real life software uh, firsthand, of course, and I found it to be super engaging. The technology is intuitive, easy to use. Um, I'm a bit of a dinosaur now in terms of my years, and so having that intuitive software was really important for getting to grips with the program quickly. Um, so seamlessly sort of transitioning into the game, I got given a, a, I chose at random at first, and I got given a life of someone in Ethiopia, and you get this information straight away. How does Australia compare to Ethiopia in terms of the United Nations Sustainability Goals? And you get all these measurements which are targeted, which sort of open your eyes straight away. Um, we're teaching in year seven anyway about livability and water. So straight away, I'm looking at the water and factors that might uh, be indicative for livability, if livability is positive or negative. And so that information is readily available, very easy to take some notes, and then you get straight into the life, um, and it creates a narrative. So you've got this one person who's your character, so straight away you want your character to do well. Um, and your character's growing up. There's a bit of malnutrition, and I had some stunted growth from not eating enough protein in my diet, and there was a family death. Um, that particular character died at the age of two. And mm. even though it was a brief go at the game the first time around, I felt, I want another go. I felt like I was cheated in life. And I dare say that, that kind of, that, that was like a eureka moment because it was, that empathy was developed for the character. Even though it was a piece of software and it's a virtual life, I had a kind of vested interest in that character. So when that character died unfairly at, at a young, like incredibly young age, two years, I, I felt cheated. And I think that is a powerful tool for students to develop that empathy with people around the world and understand how life can cheat you sometimes, but it doesn't have to. So it can be a springboard into sort of developing um, ways forward and ways of overcoming problems, whether it's poverty, climate change, or equality, whatever the situation is, it's a springboard. So that software can be a springboard for pushing on. Um, in my own personal experience, I started the game again because I wanted another go because I felt so cheated uh, and I chose the country this time and I chose Iran because I've studied Iran before and I've got friends that are mm. from Iran uh, and my life, I, I lasted a bit longer this time but there was, there was different issues as well so I felt the game, um, it wasn't sort of a one size fits all approach, it was very unique to the region or country where you have your life, your virtual life um, and some of the choices of should I get a job at the age of 14 to help support my family, um, I had friends on this virtual life who are you know, engaging in you know, drinking alcohol at a young age, um, and I ticked yes. And then my sister in the game rejected alcoholism because that's, that's what she saw on me. And it's like, you see the impact of your actions. Um, and I was actually, you can sort of set your uh, parameters of what your character's like a little bit. And I set my character to be like, you know, quite, quite intelligent. So they were doing what at school? Could I, do I want to jump forward a year at school and things like that? So it was really involved. You had some real uh, important, significant choices you can make to the character. And you saw the implications for that, not just for your own individual virtual character, but the family and the community as well. So um, super engaging software, um, great for developing empathy for others around the world, sort of bringing those stats to life. Because sometimes as a class, in a class, as a teacher, you show documentaries or things in textbook, you give them information, and it's all a bit abstract. Um, so developing that relationship with someone, even if it is virtual, in another part of the world, really does build in that empathy and can be a springboard for developing other practical, potential practical solutions for the world's problems. Isn't and it? Michael, uh, yeah. what other skills you feel as a teacher yeah. can be built or are building when you uh, play a game like Real Life? Oh, well, I mean, guess, um, maybe. There's a variety of skills that you're building. Uh, I guess ICT straight away because you're developing, you know, using software. Um, I would argue, you know, you could do this as a collaboration, group work, uh, where you could have an inquiry question, uh, and this could sort of feed into the inquiry question. As I said, I mentioned that I was teaching, or I am teaching this year about livability in water. So that could be the focus, even though you're engaging with the game in a generic way. You've got that focus all the time, so you can look out for stats and bits like that that affect livability mm -hmm. or affect water use or water quality. Um, in terms of other skills, of course, you've got literacy, uh, you've got awareness of other countries and other cultures. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think it's pretty fluid and flexible. May we 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 use some word. We are not teachers, yeah. but we use something like global citizenship. Yeah. Or uh, cross cultural understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we have social geography. Yeah, we have similar. You know? Yeah, yeah, we have similar. Yeah, in Australia, we have similar. Yes, yeah, of course. Um, absolutely, cross cultural awareness is absolutely essential. And yeah. We live in a global community. Um, you know, instant access to people halfway around the world, wherever that may be. Um, yeah, I, I'm a bit. <laughs> I feel like I've babbled on a bit too much, and I've run out. And of second is, you know, um, I see a lot of teachers. Glo- oh, we're global citizens now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's too reductive to think I'm just an Australian or I just live in Victoria or I just live in Melbourne, because as much as the choices and decisions we make in Melbourne affect other people regionally, nationally, and globally, other decisions are made which affect us as well. And I think in Australia, where climate change is, is, is there, plain to see, you've got bushfires, you've got record summer temperatures each year, uh, you've got drought in various parts of Australia. Um, we're, we're quite, you know, excluded from that in Victoria to an extent. But does it affect other people we know and love in our community? Yeah, absolutely. So developing that global citizenship is absolutely important. You know, you've got to yeah. step outside of just my neighbourhood. We're a, it's a global, local yeah. nexus, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I appreciate what you can do on a local level mm. in a global context. Context, yeah. yeah. Now, I see a lot of teachers also developing lesson plans, uh, they yeah. call it. So something yeah. which is learning, which, yeah. is, which, is, which is brought by a teacher using his innovation, creativity, yeah, understanding yeah. I mean, the class. Goals so do you see any opportunity like developing such lesson plans eventually around real lives? Um, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, you could use it across the curriculum almost um from my perspective as a geography teacher um it it speaks volumes i think i can use it from years seven to ten quite comfortably if not beyond um and again you know as an inquiry to find out about what life is like in particular regions of the world uh, and to develop that empathy which you sort of raised earlier as well um yeah yeah Yeah. and (laughs) what could be your message to the world as or a teacher community oh teacher (laughs) community um Collaborate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Collaboration's king. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have to collaborate in terms of sharing knowledge, sharing resources, sharing skills, learning from each other. Yeah, that's the way forward. You've got to collaborate. We're a yeah. community. Yeah. And uh, last is, uh, what is your take on empathy? empathy? Because empathy is so abstract for many people. Empathy is And very... how you see it as a teacher, yeah. how empathy can really change this world or whether it can change the world. Uh, empathy is a very tricky thing to teach. Um, a lot of students can see the position of someone else, but empathy is to feel the position of someone else. And, and that is very tricky. Um, and I dare say it's not a one size fits all approach. Um, different things work well for different students and different classes and different dynamics and different cohorts. Um, how, do, how to teach empathy? I guess you know, the first thing is to open, open people's eyes to the world around them. Um, to show them different perspectives, to show them that other perspectives are just as valid as their own, and to recognize that. Um, yeah, empathy is a tricky one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in the last, maybe, your background and uh, well, how you became U- teacher and... Okay. I'm from the UK. Um, I worked for a few years before going to university. So I went to university at 21, which is a bit later than most people. Um, I finished at sort of 25, but I was working all the way through. And I chose cultural and historical studies to study um, because I wanted to study something that developed me as an individual. I thought about computing or you know business and I kind of felt that it would, I'd go to sleep dreaming of numbers that wouldn't motivate me. And then I felt what I would learn might become redundant by the time I finished my studies. So I wanted something that would develop me as an individual, which wasn't the most popular attitude to take in the UK because everything's very job focused um, but I, I stand by that I feel like I had, did develop as an individual um, but even though I had inclinations to move into teaching straight away after university I never had the financial resources to do that I had to work I had to pay my rent um, I couldn't afford to take more time off to study so um, I'm relatively late to teaching I was 35 when I became a teacher um, I've worked in finance, worked in publishing. I had my own media company for a couple of years. Oh, that's good. Um, mm-hmm. Met my partner. She came over to the UK and we met in the UK in 2009. And we came over to Australia in 2012. Um, at the end of 2012, I should say. And then 
we was just on the tram going into the CBD, which is where I worked at the time, and saw an open day for Melbourne University for teaching. And we just sort of said, oh, yeah, let's just go and have a look. Uh, and we worked out the finances, and we, I could afford to take a year off to do that full time. And then, yeah, the rest is history, as they say. So, but I'm very lucky. I was in a position where I had a supportive partner. <coughs> I had enough savings to draw upon so that I could become a teacher. Um, yeah, I, that's, that's my particular journey. And yeah. because you are you are saying some very beautiful things actually okay. around education, I want, don't want to resist myself asking last question. Yeah. Is I always say that the understanding about life is missing in education yeah, or yeah. missing in classrooms. Yeah. And does this uh, understanding about life in various ways, like yeah, how people okay. live and struggle, yeah. um, will it be useful for uh, making education better? Uh, in terms of the real life software? Any, uh, just yeah, but real life is a life game. Okay, yeah. But anything okay, I mean, um, yeah, I left school and I knew things like trigonometry and I knew some history and English. I didn't know how to find somewhere to live. Mm. I didn't know how to cook. I didn't know, you know, sort of the more rudimentary things of, of life. Um, I, I left home, I was sort of just, just about to turn 18 and I had to leave home. Uh, I got somewhere to live with a friend of mine. Um, so that, that practical side of life, I, I think, is sometimes lacking in school. Um, you, you've, got, you've got to have the, the academia. Um, of course you have. You've got to have the, the, the theory of each particular subject. But school needs to have an all-round holistic education. You know, we've got to create positive citizens who are going to be contributing to society in the right way. As well as having the academic skills and knowledge, which hopefully they can pursue a career with, we need to make sure that they're... They know how they're resilient. They know that well-being is mm. an important factor. That they care for their neighbours. That they care for the wider community, not just you know Australia, but out, you know globally as well. And I think that's partly what the school should be doing as well. And the school, of course, should work in partnership with the local community and parents and guardians and everyone else and the government. It's not just on the school shoulders. Uh, I think that can sometimes be uh, an easy go-to for many people in the community. Oh, well, the school should teach that. The school should teach that. Well, the parents and the guardians have got equal, if not more, responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. The government's got responsibility. The local community is a holistic thing. Um, and so, yeah, students need to have skills and experience and knowledge to compete and get a career, of course. But they need to have the attributes to contribute to society and deal with the setbacks that they will have in their life. Um, yeah, so I think in the classroom, sometimes, yeah, things like finding somewhere to live uh, how to do a weekly budget. Sometimes that's not always prioritised. Um, I do try to do at least a couple of lessons on those things for the year sevens, just so they have a go. Look at the REA website, which is like a place where you find places to live. Uh, you've got a budget of $700 a week. Uh, whatever you pay in terms of your weekly rent, an extra 15% goes on electricity, water and gas. You've got to work out how you're going to get to work. We're going to say that you're going to work at Viewbank College. How much money have you got for savings? How much money have you got for food? Get them going onto like a, a supermarket website and get them like put together a shopping list and just getting them doing some things that we do in mm -hmm. real life, just to have a taste, you know. Um, and of course, that's just one part of it. Anyway, I'll probably yeah. digress and I've probably moved away from the question, what the question was. No, that's um, fine. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, students need a holistic approach to yes. their development. Um, it would be great if subjects were more integrated as well. I think this arbitrary separation of this is science this is maths, this is English. Uh, I think sometimes that leads students to think, well, how, how do I apply trigonometry in my everyday life? Or why, why do I learn this in, in English? Why is this, how's it gonna, I, I think by integrating it a little bit more, uh, its relevance and significance for real world becomes a bit more yeah. obvious for the students. You know, like and one of the things we tried in real life was to integrate the amount yeah. Like your family budget. Yeah. And it could yeah, be only yeah. fifty dollars. Yeah. And then you start learning whether I compromise for food yeah, yeah. or staying or That's accommodation or travel. And, and this is, you know, I see financial literacy in this way. Yeah. Where it is connected with the real situations yeah, of yeah. people. Yeah. I, I, and that's not just something like I mean, in Australia, which is considered a very well developed and affluent nation, there's so much poverty here. Yeah. There's so many people that have decisions like I can't put the heating on. Or if I do, I've got to go without food for, for one meal a day this week. Really? Uh -huh. So it's, it's not something abstract. It's not something that's in other countries. There's poverty in every country. 
Um, yeah. And I, I think you're right. Th- those, those choices and making those choices clear to people hopefully does open their eyes. Um, I don't know. I think it comes with a sense of maturity and development as well sometimes. You, you, I, I think when I was a teenager, I just wanted to you know, do the bare minimum and have the most amount of jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, yeah, you, you've got to see it from their perspective, but at the same time, try and just plant seeds and expose them to new ideas and new ways of thinking. And hopefully that helps them mature and develop the way you want to. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. Great, um, Michael. I, I've, I've probably got to, yeah, I've got to probably finish up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I hope there's some stuff that's 